طيب بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا أما بعد الحمد لله we are gathered here today on this auspicious day to listen to a short reminder by our virtuous brother أستاذنا أبو إسماعيل مصطفى جورج حفظه الله and inshallah he will be talking on the topic of Islam is our source of contentment and happiness. And this is part of our December 2020 seminar here at Masjid Abdullah ibn Abbas in Tobago. And without further ado, I give our brother, Ustad Mustafa George, Barakallahu Fikum, Tafaddal Barakallahu Fikum. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Ladi Hadan al Islam. والحمد لله الذي من علينا بالقرآن والحمد لله الذي أرسل إلينا رسوله الكريم لكي يدعونا ويبين لنا هذا الدين In the name of Allah Azza wa Jal All praise be to Allah the one who has guided us to Islam all praise be to Allah, the one who has blessed us with the Qur'an. All praise be to Allah, the one who has sent to us his precious, precious messenger to guide us and to call us to this religion. Nahmaduhu wa nashkuruhu wa nas'aluhu min fadlihi wa karamihi wa an yamituna ala al-Islam wa tawheed wa sunnah. We praise Allah Azza wa Jal. We show, show our gratitude to Allah and we ask him from his bounties that he allows us to live and to die upon Islam and upon Tawheed and upon the Sunnah of our beloved Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Indeed, it gives me great pleasure to share these moments with my beloved brothers there in the country of Tobago in the West Indies, South America, on this day, which is the 10th of Jamad al Awwal, the year 1442 Hijri, corresponding to the 25th of December 2020. And we ask Allah to allow this brief reminder to be of benefit to us all. Indeed, what the brothers are doing and what the community is doing, which is gathering in one of the houses of Allah Azawajal, Masjid Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhumah, gathering in one of the houses of Allah Azawajal to remind each other of the importance of this wonderful religion. Indeed, it is a blessing because we all know what people around the world far and wide are doing on this day and how individuals are participating in events that are not legislated and that are not pleasing to Allah Azawajal and have not been sent down in a book or revealed by a messenger. So for the Muslims to come together on this day and to listen to something of benefit is something which is great and something which is tremendous. And we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to increase us in his bounties. And that which displays the, the benefit of such gathering, the hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala who reported in Sahih Muslim, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned, مَجْتَمَعَ قَوْمٌ فِي بَيْتِ مِنْ بُيُوتِ اللَّهِ يَتْلُونَ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ وَيَتَدَارَسُونَهُ بَيْنَهُمْ إِلَّا نَزَلَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ السَّقِينَةِ وَغَشِيَتْهُمُ الرَّحْمَةِ وَحَفَتْهُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ وَذَكَرَهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي مَنْ عِنْدَهِ The Prophet ﷺ said that a people do not come together in one of the houses of Allah reciting the book of Allah and studying it studying the religion, except that the tranquility befalls them and the mercy surrounds them 
and the angels are in their company and Allah Azza wa Jal mentions them with good to those who are with him. So that hadith of Abu Huraira, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, informs, or may Allah be pleased with him, that hadith of Abu Huraira informs of the greatness that you brothers in this community are doing, coming together to learn the religion, to remind yourselves of the greatness of the religion. This is something which is tremendous and we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make it of benefit for us and our families in this life and in the next. Indeed, the religion of Islam and being guided, guided to the religion of Islam is a great blessing like no other blessing. It's a great blessing like no other blessing. As we mentioned, we have individuals around the world, especially on this day, who are doing things which are not legislated, who are doing things that were invented by men who are doing things that were invented by pagans. And it's a mixture of this and it's a mixture of that. But the Muslim who Allah Azza wa has guided to the religion of Islam, the Muslim is upon clarity in his religion. The Muslim is upon knowledge in his religion. The Muslim is upon that which has been legislated by his Lord in the glorious book and that which his been revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu in his authentic Sunnah. So the Muslim is upon clarity in his religion while the people of the world and the majority of the people of the world are upon innovation and sin and transgression and evil and that which is not pleasing to Allah Azawajal. And because of that Allah Azawajal says in Surah Yunus, قُلْ بِفَضِلِ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَهُ هُوَ خَيْرٌ مِمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ From the verses that Allah Azza wa Jal reminds the believers of his tremendous bounties upon us is Surah Yunus verse 58 where Allah Azza wa Jal says Say by the bounties of Allah and his mercy this is that which you should be grateful or this is that which you should be delighted for. It is better than that which the people gather. It is better than that which the people gather. And he, Allah Azza wa Jalla is saying to his Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to say to the people, Bi fadlillah, the bounties of Allah, by the bounties of Allah and his mercy, that's what you should be happy for. And this is better than that which the people gather. Imam Al-Tabari, one of the great scholars of tafsir, one of the greatest scholars of tafsir, mentioned that this verse means, Ayyuhal nas, alladhi tafaddala bihi alaykum wa huwa al-islam, fabayyanahu lakum wa da'akum ilayh. Imam Al-Tabari, rahim Allah ta'ala, he mentioned this verse means, O oh people, O oh mankind and believers, that which Allah has bestowed upon you from his bounties is Islam. And he has clarified it and he has called you to it. Allah Azawajal has bestowed upon us Islam and he has clarified the religion for us. And Allah Azawajal has called us to that religion. And that scholar Imam al Qabri continues to say, Wa bi rahmatihi, when Allah says, and his mercy, he says, Allati rahimakum biha, fa anzalaha ilaykum, fa alamakum ma lam takunu ta'alamun, min kitabihi, wa basarakum biha, ma'ala madinikum, wa dalika huwa al Quran. He said, The mercy of Allah, that Allah has given you from his mercy and revealed to you and taught you that which you did not know from his book and gave you clarity in the tenets of the religion. And this is yani that mercy that Allah is speaking about. He says, this is the Quran. This is the Quran. So we understand Imam Al-Tabri is saying, so the fadl of Allah that Allah mentioned in that verse, and like we said, the verse in Surah Yunus, verse 58, 
the fadl of Allah or the bounties of Allah, this is Islam. And the mercy of Allah, what is being referred to, is the Quran. Is the Quran. Then he continues to say, when Allah said, فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَهُ فَلْيَفْرَهُ هُوَ خَيْرٌ مِمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ He says, فَإِنَّ الْإِسْلَامِ أَلَّذِي دَعَاكُمْ إِلَيْهِ وَالْقُرْآنِ أَلَّذِي أَنْزَلَهُ عَلَيْكُمْ خَيْرٌ مِمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ مِنْ حُطَامِ الدُّنْيَا وَأَمْوَالِهِمْ وَكُنُوزِهِمْ He said, when Allah says, once again the verse, by the bounties of Allah and His mercy, this is that which you, be, you should be happy for and delighted for. This is better than that which they gather. So he said, when Allah says, this is that which you should be great happy for, and this is better than that which they gather, he said, Islam, which Allah has called you to, and the Quran, which he has revealed upon you, is better than everything that the people gather from the desires and temptations of the dunya, the desires and temptations of this life, and the wealth, and the treasures. So everything that the people gather of wealth, of status, of fame, every single thing they gather, Islam and the Quran is a greater blessing and bounty, bounty from Allah Azza wa Jal, which is upon the believer to be grateful for. This is that which you should be grateful for. And before we can continue, before we continue, and it's very clear, because the individuals that gather wealth, fame, glory, it's only for a particular, it's only for a specific amount of time. And he, it's only for a specific amount of time and then it will go away. Everyone has their, their peak and then they, they decrease until they become unknown. They're no longer famous. They no longer have the wealth. And then the person dies and the wealth doesn't join him in his grave. But whereas Islam and Iman, faith, and submission to Allah and the worship of Allah is something that benefits you in this life and something that benefits you in the next life. It benefits you in this life and it benefits you in the next life. So even if a person doesn't have the wealth, they don't have the fame, they're not VIP, they don't have the ease of this life, but they continue to worship Allah and are sincere in their worship of their Lord then they are promised, uh, they are promised a uh, greatness and, and pleasure and delight everlasting in, in the next life. So Allah Azawajal is reminding the believers, فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَهُ And in the Islam and the Quran, this is that which you should be happy for. Not, not the fame and not the wealth, because that's something that's going to end. And it has to end. And it has to end. And Imam al-Tabiri rahimahullah ta'ala, those statements that we read from him was not from Imam al-Tabiri himself, but he actually mentioned in his book of Tafsir, his book of the explanation of the Qur'an, he actually mentioned many statements of the Sahaba, the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that they particularly said. And we know that their understanding of the Qur'an is the best understanding because they took it directly from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, one of the close companions to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Fadlullahi al-Qur'an wa rahmatuhu an ja'alakum min ahlihi. For an example, for example, he said, the fadl of Allah, the bounty of Allah is the Qur'an. And his mercy is that Allah azawajal had placed you from the people of the Qur'an. Allah has guided you and make, made you from the people of Islam, yani the followers of the Quran. So this is from the great blessings that Allah Azawajal has bestowed upon us that the believer has to be grateful for. The believer has to be mindful of and conscious of. And through his days and his nights, he constantly reminds himself that Allah Azawajal has selected him, especially those of us that live in the West and non-Muslim countries. And many of us were raised as non-Muslims. We were raised in neighborhoods, in schools, in communities that were not Muslim, 
And we didn't have Muslims around us. But it was the pure bounty of Allah that Allah select, and from those is me. And from those is me. Being born and raised in, in, in New York City, in Brooklyn, New York, and raised in a non-Muslim family, non-Muslim community, going to school all my life amongst non-Muslims, and then Allah Azawajal choosing and guiding me to Islam and opening up my heart for Islam and Tawheed and the Sunnah of our beloved Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a blessing that I can never be grateful for. The Muslim that adheres to his religion is an individual that has been guided. He's an individual that has been guided in his beliefs. He's an individual that has been guided in his interaction with others. He's an individual that has been guided in his business transactions. And you look at the beauties of Islam. Look at the life of the individual, the human. When an individual lives, he has to deal with others. It's the relationship between him and his lords, his lord. One second, I have to plug the phone in so it doesn't, the battery doesn't die. Give me one second. Let me just make sure that the phone's plugged in. No. No. So the individual that lives in this life, no matter where he lives in this life, the individual, there's the relationship that he has between him and his Lord. And there's the relationship that he has between him and the creation. And there's the relationship that he has between him and himself. Islam is the religion that has guidance for all aspects of the individual's life. Whether it's related to him and his Lord. You have people around the world. Those individuals don't know their Lord. They don't know what's expected from them. They don't know the description of their Lord. They don't know how to worship their Lord. They don't know who is their Lord. Individuals worshiping idols. Individuals worshiping other people. And the wor individuals worshiping the sun. Worshiping the moon. Worshipping men, worshipping women. Islam, Allah Azawajal has taught us in the Quran. The worship of Allah Azawajal. Kul huwa Allahu ahad. Allahu samad. Lam yilid wa lam yulad wa lam yakul lahu kufu wa ahad. Say Allah is one. Say Allah is self-sufficient. Allah was not born, nor did Allah Azawajal have children. And there is no one similar to Allah Azawajal. Allah Azawajal has taught us as Muslims that Allah Azawajal is one. Ala lillahi al-deen al-khalis. Indeed, the worship and the religion is only for Allah Azawajal. Ya ayyuhal nas, u'budu rabbakum ulladhi khalakakum walladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. O mankind, worship your Lord who created you. Worship your Lord who created you. And he created those who came before you so that you may have consciousness and taqwa of Allah Azawajal. So we understand as Muslims that we only worship Allah Azawajal, our creator, our provider. I have not created the jinn nor the mankind, except for them to worship me. I do not want any wealth from them, nor do I want them to feed. 
Indeed, Allah is the provider, the possessor of strength. So the believer, the Muslim, knows the purpose of creation. He knows why he exists. We have individuals far and wide, billions and billions of individuals don't know why they exist. They're in a state of confusion. This week they're thinking this, they're believing this. The next week they're believing something else. One week they're trying out this religion. One week they're trying out that religion. One week they're reading this book. Another week they're reading that book. But the Muslim knows. The Muslim knows that we have only been created and we walk this earth to worship Allah Azza wa Jal. وَإِلَاهُكُمْ إِلَاهٌ وَاحِدٌ لَا إِلَاهَ إِلَّهُ To the end of the verse, and your Lord is one Lord. Your Lord is one Lord. قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِي وَنُسُكِي وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ وَبِذَلِكَ أُمِرْتُ وَأَنَا أَوَّلِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Say, my worship, my sacrifice. قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِي وَنُسُكِي my living and my death is for Allah, the Lord of the worlds. There is no partners with him. There is no partners with him. So the believer is one that lives in a state of, of comfort, in a state of knowledge, in a state of understanding his very purpose in life. He understands. He's upon clarity. So this brings comfort to his heart because he's working toward so he's worshiping Allah Azawajal and he's working toward the hereafter. He's not an individual who's confused. He's not an individual who's looking for the purpose of life, as they say, looking for the purpose of life, looking for the purpose of creation. No, he knows the very purpose of life. He knows what's going to happen in this life. He knows what's going to happen in in the hereafter because Islam is that which Allah Azza wa Jal has guided him to. Likewise, and because of that, the believer, when we read the Quran, when Allah Azza wa Jal says in Surah Ala Imran, Al-Yawma akmaltu lakum deenukum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa raditu lakum al-Islam deena. Today, I have completed your religion and I have perfected my favor. And I am pleased with, with Islam as your religion. The religion of Islam is complete. The religion of Islam has no deficiencies. The religion of Islam has no ambiguities. That which is unclear. That which is confusing. No, the religion is, of Islam is absolutely clear. And it has to be that way, my dear brothers and sisters. Because it's the last prophet and the last book that would be re revealed to mankind before the day of judgment. As the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, Ana khatim al la nabiyya ba'di. I am the last of the prophets. There is no prophet after me. So after the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu we know there was a series of prophets and messengers. Adam and Nuh and others, many others, Musa and Ibrahim and Jesus alayhi salatu wasalam, alayhi salatu wasalam, and Yunus and Yusuf and Ismail, and Ishaq, and Ya'qub, all of those prophets, prophets and messengers that Allah, Azza wa Jal, that Allah, the Most High, sent to guide mankind from darkness to light. Allah, Azza wa Jal, did not leave the people to make up things themselves, to make up worship themselves, to make up a way of life themselves. Allah, Azza wa Jal, sent clear guidance by way of a book and by way of a messenger to mankind to direct them to instruct them, to remind them, to admonish them, to warn them, to give them glad tidings so that they would not be in a state of confusion like we have the people of the world in a state of confusion today. So Allah Azza wa Jalla in that verse in Surah Al-Imran said, I have perfected, I have completed the religion. I have completed the religion. I have perfected it. And I am pleased with Islam as your religion. I'm pleased with Islam as your religion. When that verse was revealed, there's a hadith that mentions on the authority of Ibn Abbas, the same, the same Sahabi that the masjid is named after. 
that there was some Jews who were present and they heard that verse. There were some Jews who were present and they heard that verse from the Quran. And they said, if this verse was revealed to us, we would take this day as a celebration. We would take this day as a celebration. Why? Because they feel that there's deficiency, there's ambiguity, there's something incomplete in their religion. And Ibn Abbas anhuma, said, I know which verse you're talking about. It's this verse. To the end of the verse. Today I have completed your religion. And what does Allah say at the end of the verse? And I am pleased with Islam as your religion. I am pleased with Islam as your religion. Why, my dear brothers? Because it's a complete way of life. Islam informs us, as I mentioned, about our relationship with our Lord, our Creator, our Provider, our Sustainer. Islam informs us about our relationship with the rest of the creation, starting with our families, our wives, our children, our immediate family, our extended family, our neighbors, people that we work with, our, our, our uncles, our aunts. Islam has guidance for everything. Every single aspect of your life, Islam has guidance for. So you are in a state of understanding. You are in a state of comfort. Why? Because you know why you live and how to live. You have the hadith in Sahih Muslim on the authority, on the authority of Salman al-Farisi radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who was from Persia and became a Muslim where a Jew also said to him, he said, لَقَدْ عَلَّمَكُمْ نَبِيَّكُمْ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ حَتَّى الْخَرَاءِ He said, to Salman al-Farisi, this Jew said to Salman al-Farisi, he said, your prophet taught you everything, even how to use the bathroom. And Salman al-Farisi said, Ajal. He said, yes. And then Salman al-Farisi explained that the Prophet sallam, said that we shouldn't face the qibla in the direction that we pray when we use the bathroom. And when we clean ourselves, we clean ourselves like this, like that, like that. The point is, even how to go to the bathroom Islam has guide, guidance for the Muslim. Islam has guidance for, for the Muslim. Likewise, as it relates to, and all of the problems of the world as we see, the problems of, 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 of marriage, the problems of, of, of um, indecent sexual acts, the problems of crimes, the problems of economies, the problems of this, the problems of that, every single aspect Every single matter of uh, turmoil and calamity in the world, Islam has an answer to. And then as we relate, as we mentioned about the, the, the treatment of the wives, the Prophet وسلم, mentioned, or Allah Azza mentioned in Quran, وَعَاشِرُهُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ yani, Marriage, you and a woman, a woman and a husband, Allah Azza mentioned specific guidance for the believer in the Quran. Allah says, and treat them in kindness. Allah Subhanahu wa says, وَلَهُنَّ مِثْلُ الَّذِي عَلَيْهِنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ Allah Azza wa says, the women have rights similar to the men. Likewise, Allah Azza wa says, الرِّجَالُ قَوَّعَمُونَ عَلَى النِّسَاءِ Guidance in the Quran, Allah Azza wa says, the men are the protectors and maintainers of the women. So Islam makes a man responsible. Islam makes a man realize that his wife has rights over him and he has rights, rights over his wife. The Prophet ﷺ said, خيركم خيركم The best of you is the best to his family. So Islam in the Quran and in the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, there's guidance for the relationship between a husband and his wife. Allah Azza wa Jalla says in the Quran, "Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu ku anfusakum wa ahlikum nar." Allah says in the Quran, "O you who believe, save yourself and your families from the hellfire." The Prophet, so we understand that we have there's a responsibility. We can't just be with a female and abandon her and forsake her. No, 
we're going to be held accountable for ourselves and for our families, for our wives and for our children. The Prophet Wasallam said, Kullukum mas'ulun, kullukum ra'i wa kullukum mas'ulun an ra'iyati. Prophet Wasallam said, all of you are shepherds and all of you will be responsible for his flock. So Islam molds an individual into being a responsible individual in his community, in his family, in the masjid. Just doesn't leave an individual to live however he wants to live. No, Islam is that which molds an individual and makes him a responsible individual. Likewise, Islam, as it relates to the character of the individual, people take their character from, from movies. People take their character from songs, from the worst of the character. The movies are about violence and about crime. So that's where you're going to take your character from. Or you're going to take your character from cartoons and Marvel and whatever. Is that where you're going to take your character from? Or you're going to take your character from the streets, the criminals, and the evil individuals, and those who deceive. Or will you take your character from that which Allah Azza wa Jal has legislated in his book and in the authentic sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As Allah Azza wa Jal said about his messenger, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ Allah Azza wa Jal said about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and indeed you have exemplary manners and character. From the best of the characters, the character of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, إِنَّمَا بُعِفْتُ our beloved messenger وسلم, said, Indeed, I was sent to perfect people's character. Indeed, I was sent to perfect people's character. So Islam is not only, does not only focus on the worship between the servant and his Lord, does not only focus on the relationship between a man and his wife, a man and his children, Islam also focuses on the relationship between the individual and who he interacts with in the society. The Muslim should be the best of character because this is mentioned in our book and it's likewise mentioned upon the tongue of our beloved messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the Quran, you have many places in the Quran, Surah Luqman, where he says, Luqman alayhi salatu salam said to his son, وَلَا تُسَعِرْ خَدَّكَ لِلنَّاسِ وَلَا تَمْشِي فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَحَ Don't raise your chin up to the people as if you're, you're prideful, as if you see yourself to be above them. And don't walk pridefully. This is in the Qur'an, my dear brothers. Allah Azawajal is reminding us of how the Muslim carries himself. He's not someone who is prideful. He's not someone who is boastful. He's not someone that feels he's above, above others. Uh, which is one of the ills of the society, racism and bigotry. So the, from, from the greatest ills of the society around the world, and we see that Islam is something that has dealt with this over 1,400 years ago. A complete surah in the Quran, Surah Al-Hujurat, where Allah Azawajal specifically talks about the character of the believers. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu la yaskhar khawmun min qawm. O you who believe. No people should mock and make fun of other people. And then Allah says, and not the women either. Just in case some people thought, oh, that was talking about the men. Allah says, not the women either. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu. Ijtanibu kathira min al-dhan. I'm going through the verses. O you who believe, stay away from suspicion. Inna ba'da al-dhanni la'ithm. Some suspicion is a sin. Wala tajassasu. Allah says, and do not spy on one another. And do not backbite one another. Do not speak ill about one another. So we find ourselves, we find Allah Azawajal in the Quran is guiding the believer to the best of character, the best of manners. The Prophet ﷺ said in another hadith, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةً فَأَصْلِهُ no, no, عفوان, In the Quran, Allah says, in the same surah Hujurat, in the Mu'minun Iqwa, fa aslihu bayna akhawaykum wa taqullah. In the same surah, Surah Hujurat, Allah Azza says, the believers are brothers. So mend between your brothers. 
And you have in a hadith where the Prophet وسلم, said, Al Muslim Akhul Muslim. Prophet وسلم, said, The Muslim is the brother to the Muslim. La yathlumu, wa la yahkuru, wa la yahdulu, wa la yahkuru. The Prophet said, The Muslim is the brother to the Muslim. He does not oppress him, he does not belittle him, he does not deceive him. Wa la yabi' ba'dukum ala bay'i ba'd. Look at that, my brothers. The Prophet ﷺ said, even when one of you is in the process, in a business transaction, about to purchase something, another one, it's not allowed for him to come and say, no, I'll give you more money. Sell it to me. Islam protects the rights between the, the, the brothers. Islam protects your rights as a Muslim. There's a hadith, similar hadith with the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that if one of you is in the process of marrying a female and he has put he has asked for her hand in marriage and the family has accepted it's not permissible for another muslim to come and say please don't marry her to her don't marry her to him marry her to me we can't do that as muslims why because islam respects the honor of a muslim the honor of your brother islam respects that so the reason why an individual, going back to that verse in Surah Yunus, with that you should be grateful and happy, is because Islam is a religion that legislates specific guidance in every aspect of your life. In the speech of the Muslim, the actions of the Muslim, Islam is a religion that holds everyone responsible. The Prophet وسلم, said, Man ra'a minkum munkaran, fal yugayirhu bi yadi. Fa in lam yastatia fa bili sanihi, fa in lam yastatia fa bi kalbihi, wa dalika adha fu li iman. Whoever from amongst you sees something wrong, then change it with his hand. If he doesn't have the ability, change it with his tongue. And if he doesn't have the ability, then he should hate it in his heart. So the first and the highest level that you change it with your hand, you see something wrong. So Islam is not a religion that, oh, I mind my business, the ills of society, a crime taking place in front of me, and I just mind my business. No, Islam is a religion that everyone is held responsible. It's a collective responsibility. So the believers understand that you have a responsibility in your community, in your home, in the masjid, wherever you are, as Isa alayhi salatu salam said, وَجَعَلَنِي مُبَارَكًا أَيْنَ مَا كُنْتُ Allah Azza wa mentioned that Isa alayhi salatu salam, Jesus, said that Allah has made me blessed wherever I may be. This is the life of a Muslim. Whatever community you are in, whichever service you are doing, whatever commit, commitment you make, people should feel that you are blessed. This man is blessed. If this man or Muslim woman is in, in our community, there's good that has come to our community. If he's in our job, if he works with us, there's good that has come to our job. If he's around us, there's good that has come. Why? Because this man is a man of honesty. This man is a man of morals. This man is a man that lives his life by the way of his Lord. So people trust you, people enjoy your company, people want to be amongst you. So these are just some of the, the things that the believer should be reminded of as it relates to the beauties of Islam. And my dear brothers, in order for an in, my brothers and sisters, in order for an individual to understand, in order for an individual to understand those beauties of Islam, you have to take it upon yourself to learn this religion. If you do not read the book of your Lord, if you do not read the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, you will not realize. And then you will find yourself lost, saying that you're a Muslim, saying that you're a Muslim, but you're lost. And you're wondering, why, why are you lost? And some people, they blame it on Islam, but they don't realize you have not studied Islam. You have not studied Islam. You have not learned Islam. Don't think that you can say one day, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah. And then you don't worship Allah Azza wa Jal. You don't learn the religion. 
and you expect Islam to have an, an impact in your life, when you have not taken it upon yourself to learn the religion, to study the religion, to implement the religion. So by the grace of Allah Azza wa you have a masjid there in Tobago, Masjid Abdullah bin Abbas, radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, and we ask Allah Azza wa to bless those who are responsible for the masjid, and to bless those who are responsible for spreading the da'wah there. And we ask Allah Azza wa to rectify our affairs, and to allow us to be from amongst those that understand the mahasan al-Islam, the beauties of Islam, and the good which is present in Islam, for verily it is a complete way of life, and it is that which will have a major impact in the life of the believer. Allah knows best. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala ahlihi wa ala ahlihi wa sahbihi wa sallam tasliman kithira wa jazakum allahu khayra. Jazakum allahu khayran ustadhana. Barak Allah fikum. We couldn't, we couldn't have asked for a more comprehensive uh, lecture, mashaAllah. Jazakum allahu khayran. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala place it on your scale of good deeds yawm al-qiyamah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to benefit. I hope we have I hope we have more discourses like this. We need the community to hear more from you. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. Barakallah Allah Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.